Well, hello and welcome everybody to the OpenShift Commons gathering on databases. Um, we're gonna wait a few minutes to get everybody in the door because um, we've just started broadcasting now and myself and Jalem um, are going to be the host, I'll be the host and she'll be the moderator for today. Um, so we're just excited to get started here. So let's give everybody a couple of minutes to say hi in the chat um, and well, um, if you have questions or problems, just um, ask them in the chat um, on the side here, and we should hopefully get rocking and rolling um, pretty soon here. So thanks for your patience with our process. We'll give it another minute um, and watch as people come in. And it's going to be kind of an exciting day because we have some really cool end user story today um, about... Um, uh, an interesting deployment at, at massive scale, um, which is going to be cool. And so we've got lots to talk about today and lots of new things going on around databases here at Red Hat and on OpenShift and out there in the entire cloud native ecosystem. So today is going to be a fun day um, to talk about all of that. So I can see that people are piling in. All right. Event. And we'll give everybody a few minutes. If you want to give a shout out where you're dialing in from, that would be great. I'm up in Canada, here in, on the West Coast in BC, British Columbia. And my moderator today is, is dialing in from, are you in Boston, Jayla? Yes, yes, Boston, Massachusetts. And there's Mike. All right. So we are um, all set up here, ready to go. I'm just going to give a little bit of background about um, what OpenShift Commons is and what we're, why we're here today, um, talking at you like this from a community point of view. Um, and uh, then we'll, hey, bye back. Hi there. Um, we'll sh give a few shout outs to people around the world that are dialing in and doing this stuff. Um, with us, and um, I'm just going to pop over to my welcome slides and advance and get us rocking and rolling. So um, OpenShift Commons um, is an ecosystem-based open source community. Um, their members are, or it's organizational based, so it, you join as an organization like KPMG or any of the other companies that are, are here today. Um, and anyone from that company or anyone from an enterprise using OpenShift or even um, trying to learn about OpenShift can join. Um, and it's where we come together to collaborate and work on OpenShift and all things cloud native. So we don't really specifically um, force you to use OpenShift. We do a lot of open source projects, um, talks, and you'll hear some today uh, about things like um, OLM or Operator Lifecycle Management or Operator um, SDK. Those things are CNCF projects. So the OpenShift Commons really um, incorporates all of those um, aspects of the cloud native ecosystem with, you know, a good smattering of OpenShift and um, Red Hat technologies. So um, today, um, I'm Diane Mueller. I'm the Director of Community Development here for the Cloud Platforms BU. Um, and I am the um, person behind the screen for all of the OpenShift Commons initiatives. And you can find OpenShift Commons at commons.openshift.org. And Jalum Pandit is um, a product manager working with me on all things um, cloud native here. And Jalum, say hi. Yes. Hello, everyone. Um, I'm Jay Lam, and I work specifically on OpenShift and in the product marketing team. Cool. And so really what we're going to do is we're going to talk about open source. Um, we are all about open communities, so we try and do all of these things um, transparently and out in the open. If you know Red Hat, you know that open source is in our DNA. Um, we op try and open source everything, every acquisition we do, whether it's Stack Rocks or CoreOS or any of the other things um, that we've acquired as a company. Um, and we try and imbue all of our um, participation in the CNCF and other foundations and other in the Kubernetes with a sense of openness and transparency and collaboration, because really it is about that collaboration that allows us to drive um, innovation into our projects and products um, and into your enterprises. So today is really about making those connections with each other. So this is Hopin. It's a wonderful platform. There's a Q&A function. There's a chat function. Please take advantage of those. Reach out um, and chat with us um, while we're talking. There's a lot of people in the, um, the chat 
um, that can help you if you have a question, but do post things in the Q&A um, if you can, because really this is about connecting with other people. Um, OpenShift Commons is really um, about a new community model. Um, we don't just work on trying to get people to contribute to our projects. Um, we know that all of our projects and products are interrelated and interdependent on other projects and other um, feedback mechanisms from end users, from partners. To that end, we um, try really hard to promote these peer-to-peer -peer interactions. And if you'd like to be on our mailing list and join Commons, you can scan that QR code or come to commons.openshift.org and we will um, get you hooked up um, with our newsletters. We do like code contribution. So if you're interested, um, there's always a project that needs more resources. Um, and we have a pretty active OpenShift Commons um, Slack channel as well as special interest groups and working groups on specific topics. Um, so to, I'm, I'm kind of excited today about um, what we're doing because we've got um, a great agenda. And I'm going to let um, Jay Loom talk, talk us through this because um, she's going to be the moderator for the day. And you probably won't see my face unless something goes awry in the back end until the AMA session again. So Jay Loom, um, walk us through this agenda. and. Um, uh, tell us what's going to happen today. Yes. Thank you, Dan. So hello, everyone. Uh, thank you so much for joining us today. We have a really exciting agenda lined up, and we're going to cover quite a few interesting topics, ranging from some new roadmap updates from our side to we'll talk about backup and recovery for databases on Kubernetes, and specifically OpenShift, as well as some end user talks that will give us some great insight into how our end users and customers are building new applications and supporting platforms, massive platforms with databases on OpenShift and possibly the challenges that they're addressing um, as they build these platforms or these solutions and applications or the challenges that they face and they've overcome. So we're really thrilled to have you here and we really hope that you stick around with us till the end. Uh, because like Diane mentioned, we'll have an AMA session with some experts from Red Hat. Please also feel free to keep putting in questions as and when they come up, as well as sharing your experience um, about what you're doing in your organizations as we go through the event. Um, we can go to the next slide now. Now, depending on where you are in the journey of adopting databases on containers and Kubernetes, I'm sure that you've had or you've been met with hesitations around deploying such stateful workloads, such as databases. But we've come a long way, and databases are actually the top workloads on containers and Kubernetes now, and this, is, this has been substantiated by several surveys. One of these surveys was done by us last, late last year, and this was conducted at a global scale with over 200 respondents from different industries, such as FSI, to healthcare, to telco. And over 75% of the respondents spanning roles such as CXOs, VPs, directors, reported that databases and data caching workloads were actually the top workloads in their organization. So we can see that while the common culprits, such as web servers, logging and monitoring softwares, definitely are popular and they kind of show up at the top, um, but data workloads are driving significant Kubernetes adoption as well. And the specific steps and components in a data pipeline might vary across organizations and the use cases that you're trying to implement, but the core steps that are highlighted in the diagram um, in the reference architecture, they usually remain the same. So from ingesting and aggreg aggregating the data from multiple sources to preparing and processing this data, to storing this data in an operational database, um, to performing analytics or preparing it for further um, AIML use cases. Um, this pipeline is pretty much what stays. And you can see that Red Hat OpenShift is really equipped to support you in your journey with databases and data analytics and just general cloud native app development. We have a broad set of ISV ecosystems um, and strategic integrations to help you simplify and manage databases and data analytics workloads. And all of this is enabled by OpenShift and can be run on OpenShift.